Prince Louise with Louise Mickey Art and welcome to the channel and I'm here today to actually do a commission piece and um, it harkens back to a cloud pour that I did about a year and a half ago and had a really cool result and somebody wants me to make them a pour like that only I'm going to use bloom paints bloom recipe paints for this it's going to be a swipe instead of a cloud pearl pour I'll flash the picture up in a second here, the, the creation that I'm trying to kind of replicate. So what I've got are a whole bunch of paints. I'm not going to go into detail right now, but I have four different blues, I have three different reds, and I have a silver and a white that I'm going to swipe a flag of sorts, an abstract flag. And then the thought process here is um, once it dries, I'm going to see how I can do this, but putting in some soldiers, silhouettes of soldiers on the bottom here. So this is going to be a work in progress. But the first step here is to lay down the pillow paint or the base, which is my multi-pro. And I'm going to spread it out, cover the canvas, and then I'll get to work. It's pretty simple if I can get this right. It should be just one swipe and then maybe some, maybe some embellishments as I go. But we'll see, we'll see how much work I make out of this. <laughs> I will say that doing something as a commission piece with an expectation is a very different animal than just creating something between you and the paints and then coming out with something cool that somebody else might like in the end. This is a very specific outcome I'm going for and it kind of puts a little more pressure on and uh, yeah, I guess we'll just see how it goes. But it's a di different approach to painting than just painting to create for the fun of it. So, all right, let me get down in a second. So because this video was literally an hour and a half long with all the components, I am definitely speeding up and I'm going to be cutting out spots. But so you know, this is all I'm doing here is laying down three rows of blue. Now, I was trying to figure out how, to get, how do I get a blue that's going to match a flag and then I decided I'm not going to. I used four colors. I used Golden's Payne's Gray, Golden's Anthraquinone Blue, Golden's Ultramarine Blue, and then my navy mixture that I had been using for my KS resin. Then on the reds, I used three different reds because I'm not going to match the red exactly. So my three different reds consisted of Arteza's Bordeaux Red, Deco Arts Garnet, and Golden's Quinacridone Magenta. Then, once I got that laid down, I interspersed the white stripes with Golden's uh, Iridescent Silver mixed on top with Golden's Iridescent Pearl. And then I ended up putting some of the pearl on top of some of the other colors as well. So I did not want these lines to be completely straight and even deliberately. I have the palette knife I'm going to use there. And before I start, I'm going to add a little more color because I want to have enough color to get far enough to the my right, your left, in creating this flag. So I'm just embellishing with some, some color here to make sure I've got that. And then a little practice run with my palette knife. Don't be on such an angle. Here we go. Mix up my white, give it a mix, give the black a mix. I got an air bubble. This is my white cell activator. black so you'll notice as I'm loading the palette knife I'm putting a lot of the black on <clears throat> one of the edges now that will be the left edge as I lay it down and I'm doing that on purpose because I want the black to be kind of the beginnings of the flagpole of the flag All right. when I go to spread this out Swish it around so a bit. right now you see the cell activator 
on that one side, and that one side will be the left side of the painting. So I'm laying it down, and then here we go with the swipe. And I wanted to get the idea of a flag waving in the air. So that's the start. So as this develops, I'm gonna definitely be pushing ahead quickly and also skipping. And I'll try to notify you when I'm skipping parts, but you're not gonna miss anything that's pertinent. Let's see what we get here. So one of the things I was a little surprised about is that where I'm blowing right there, I couldn't get a whole lot of the color to come through. And I don't know why, because the other cells are great where the color is. I may have had too much cell activator. I may have dug in a little too far with the palette knife as I was initiating the swipe. I'm not sure. I'm going to pick up the pace though really quick here. So my first order of business is to get the shape of that flag where I want it to go. So I do some serious tilting here and then I will be pulling on the flag itself with my palette knife to stretch it out a little bit. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of scrunching it up in one direction and then stretching it out in the other, lifting it and stretching it from top to bottom and left to right. Also at the same time, I'm trying to get the um, pillow to spread out a little bit more. So here I'm just grabbing the palette knife and just pulling on the flag to stretch it out. And there's actually a thought process in this creation. Uh, I'm trying to convey a certain image or mood from this flag and then this entire creation that hopefully by the end you'll understand what I was going for. So here I decided to spin it because I wanted the flag to spread out a little bit more. And notice I have it not centered on the turntable. I have it so that the center of the spin is the flag itself because I want the flag to rotate evenly from the turntable. More working on the sides. I'm going to skip ahead again. And this is how part one ends. Part two, where I'm literally taking the same paints I use and adding color to the cells that are there without any color within them. I just felt like it needed a little more color to make the flags set off a little bit better. So that's all this is. I'm probably gonna skip ahead here and go on fast forward. So you've probably noticed that as I'm dipping the paint, I often will dab it off on the paper towel because I just did not want to have a solid chunk of color down. I wanted to have it a little more transparent. So we're nearing the end of part two here, and we're going to start part three, where I begin to lay the background of the scene under the flag. Now, what I have there is something called a mop brush, and I'm doing dry painting here. So I'm taking Payne's Gray, black, and titanium white, and I'm blending them together to create fog or clouds. Actually, I'm creating clouds here to start. I'm just creating a background. So I gotta lay the background. I'm gonna have two backgrounds actually before I lay down the soldiers. And I watched a really good YouTube channel. I will list it in the description. A lady named Jane who really had a great tutorial on how to uh, blend for smoke and fog in a scene. So now I'm going a little heavier on the black and I am just trying to create a foreground here where there'll be, that's basically the earth. 
and I've got to create something that these soldiers would be standing on as they're coming through the fog and the smoke. So this is the end of part three. Now on to part four. Same tools I'm gonna to use as far as brushes, but now I'm going to use Burnt Umber, Titanium White, and Payne's Gray. Now this is gonna be my smoky background. The gray background is mostly kind of, it's supposed to be like a cloudy feel. And now I'm actually wanna get a smoky feel. And there I'm showing you how much I put on the brush. So again, I'm gonna go fast, I'm gonna skip. That's one of the hazards of using these brushes is that they have so much fiber in them that they tend to lose their hair every once in a while and you gotta pick it off. And at first I was actually afraid to pick it off the canvas, but just pick away because it'll come off and you can just mop right on top of it again. So you'll see as the layer develops how this adds a new dimension to the gray background. So back to the foreground, trying to make it look as realistic as possible. You don't want to have it to be a solid color. You want to kind of blend it in there. A little skip ahead, adding some shrub brush in the foreground. And we're almost done with this section. Now part four completed. Flag, foreground, background, and some of the smoke. Now part five, I actually went on the internet and looked up military soldiers silhouettes and I copied them into a Word document and then printed them out. And then I used carbon paper to basically lay the outline down on the canvas. So you can see the outline of my three soldiers there. And all I'm using here is just some flat gesso black as my silhouettes because they're silhouettes and they're black and so that worked out really well and they're nice and flat which I wanted to have something with no sheen so yeah here are my two soldiers done pretty much done and now number three and we'll uh, skip ahead a little bit as we go so here I'm laying out more paint I've got some titanium white and Payne's gray and I'm gonna soften the background a little bit because I didn't like the way it looked more like a line also kind of have the soldiers in a halo of sorts. So when you're looking at them, it looks like they're emerging from a cloud cave, so to speak. So I did a big skip ahead here. Now I'm back to the foreground, adding a couple more plants or bushes, if whatever they are, in the foreground so that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. There we are, number what are we on? Five? Number six. So what I have in my hand there is something called a fan brush. And I'm just, for the first time, trying to add fog under and around the soldiers. So I've got my titanium white there, and I'm trying to just st stipple it on there as best I can. I do make a mistake, though, because I tried to work too big of an area before trying to blend it in. And so when I started to work on blending things, it the paint didn't want to move. So I had to go back over it again, and you'll see that in a second. So now I add a little with a fan brush, and then I blend it with the mop brush. So I cut out a big chunk right there, and I'm, then I'm going to go back to the background again, and you can see what I'm doing. I'll probably cut ahead again. So 
So everyone, this brings us to the end of the video, and thank you for staying with me the whole way through. This is also to honor all of our active, retired, and fallen soldiers. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and take care now.